guard and we rebound. That's why we're sitting here. But you have to play with swag and you can't be afraid of your moment. Marches for players. I will put you in a position to be successful. Then believe in yourself, believe in your game, and have your moment out there. But that doesn't just mean the guys on the floor. That means the guys that are on the bench. When there's a moment for you to cheer for a teammate, be electrifying on the bench. Even if you come out of the game, you don't want to come out of the game, be electrifying on the bench. This is our time. This is what we prepared all year for. And we're ready for it. We've got a lot of experience. We've played in this event. We know what it is. Stay the course. No matter how it starts or how it goes, stay the course. Together! One, two, three, together! Jaden Hadid. Reese will pull up for three. Good! Beautiful, beautiful athleticism by Mike Patrick. But this guy, Butler, will steal it back and get it back himself. Two hands slammed up. Lamont Butler. Oh, we He hardly ever shows emotion, but after that slam, man, you can see it on his face. San Diego State is doing what they normally do. Moving on, winning games in the postseason. Fellas, experience means something. And your experience down the stretch meant a lot. We won the game as a team. I'm proud of all of you. Team on three, Barry on six. One, two, three, three. Four, five, six. Let's get that board. We Ooh. does that not get you Ooh. fired up as Tech Nation? <laughs> what is going on, everybody? This is the Sons of Montezuma podcast. I am your host, Mateo. You can find me at Mateo San Diego on Twitter, and of course, you could find us on uh, well on Twitter as well at Sons of Monty. And uh, well, I'm joined with my uh, my my co-host. You cannot stop him. You can only Hope to contain him. And we got a new little intro in, intro for Beam. <laughs> All right. Too much. Too much. What's going on, SD Sports Fiend? How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Oh, man. Sweating out that win yesterday. Uh, I was watching on my lunch break from work. And, you know, finally, if I had like a one o'clock appointment with a client. And I think it ended right at one o'clock. And it was just like, man. What, a, what amazing ending, you know, surviving an advanced season. This is what it's all about. All you got to do is get that W and move on. And that's what we did. That's absolutely what they did. 69 to 65, the fifth seed Aztecs take down the 12th seed UAB, Alabama, Birmingham. It was, uh, if you guys watched our little little reaction yesterday, Fiend, it was uh, a little too close for comfort. That's the way I phrased it, right? Uh, we had control the whole game pretty much, uh, but we all knew if you did any little bit of research and listened to our last episode, UAB, they like to run that one three one zone. And after a while, it kind of caught up to us, but the Aztecs were able to prevail. Now, I was preparing myself to uh, call in sick on Friday so I could watch that game. I ended up getting a little sick. So it's like, man, ah, just it was destiny. It was destiny, though. The Aztecs won, and that's all that matters, surviving events. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, what what an amazing, you know, game ending there the last like three minutes. I mean, we've seen so many of these games during the regular season where, you know, it's neck and neck and we haven't been able to pull it out, you know, and the guys, they hit timely free throws. They hit timely shots. They made defensive stops when they had to. And, um, you know, and I think maybe we got a little bit of luck there, too. You know, some of those late shot clock. Uh, shots that um, we were able to get offensive rebounds off of. And um, that's that's what the tourney is about. You know, you, it's not just how you play, but sometimes you got to get a little lucky too to advance. And, hey, I'll take all the luck that we can get because we haven't been very lucky in the regular season. You know, if you listen to Coach Dutcher's uh, postgame presser, loved what he had to say, and watching that video that they just put out of the pregame attitude, the talk, everything, I mean, everything lined up so perfectly. Um, you know, talking about Brian Dutcher's post game, you know, he was saying that experience from the team really came through. They didn't 
They didn't, you know, get nervous like what you're saying towards the end. We sometimes wouldn't, weren't able to get those clutch buckets when we needed to in conference play. But that experience of being in the tournament, being battle tested, I think that was something that this team really, you know, they had their adversity, but they've shown that they they got that experience. They're not going to go away, you know, just because UAB came back and actually took the lead, man. Took the lead. I was I was freaking out. I'll be honest with you. I was a little freaking out because you just never know. Tournament. I mean, we've already seen it in our own bracket, right? Auburn goes down, and now we got to deal with Yale. We got to deal with these fools. America's, you know, Cinderella once again is just like last year, man. Just like last year. Yeah, and you know, it's crazy how that this this is kind of setting up for the same repeat of last year, where you, mm. you know, knock off. You have a very close game in the in the first round, and then you're faced with a lower seed than you thought you were going to play in the second round. And then if you if you get by them, then mm -hmm. you get the number one overall seed and we'll see what you're all about. But I don't I'm not going to, you know, pencil in our name uh, that quickly, you know, to the next yeah. round because, hey, you got to tip your hat to Yale and how they played against Auburn because Auburn was playing like a team that was almost an, I would consider like a number one seed or number two seed going into yeah. the tournament, having won the SEC championship. I mean, they were just on a roll. And so um, we'll get into that with the, with this Yale Bulldog team. But, man, they uh, they really impressed me. So talking about this last game, right? Okay, Mike is not here. I see I, I see you, Mike, though. Where's the handsome guy? We want to send our, our shout-out to Mr. Mike Torla. He wasn't able to actually watch the game. I told him I, re I respect him. For putting family, family first, and, and, yeah. but he did have something to share because this game was crazy. Mike, I hope you're watching. I hope you hope you enjoy this little this little take he had about about the game. Down here at Disney, got to watch the game last night. Hey, you know what's better than some Jane Lady? More Jane Lady. We got it. Just a beast of a season. The greatest season in Aztec history for an individual. Unbelievable. Get a chance to go to Sweet 16 in back-to-back -back years. First time in program history. Pretty neat, dude. Beat the 12 seed. We play the 13. Same script as last year. Hey, big game. Got to have it. Chance to go to Sweet 16. Jaden Ladee doing Jaden Ladee things. Go Aztecs. No, Michael Tortolat. Michael Tortolat. Appreciate that from him. Always going hard in the paint. I really appreciate that. Let's talk about Jalen Ladifine. 32 points, eight boards. It was the highest point total in Aztecs tournament history. Like I said in the last uh, little, little reaction, he surpassed Xavier Thames 30 in 2014. And I think that was, was that the New Mexico State game, right? I think that one went into overtime. So, that just tells you what a performance Jaden Ladee had against UAB. They they physically they didn't have an answer. They didn't have one guy or two guys that could really match up at all. But as we mentioned, that one three one zone kind of leveled things out. It, it really did. Um, carrying over into Yale, I mean, do you, do you see anything that we need to be prepared for similarly to to that point? Because um, Yale they were out physical against Auburn. Just like you know, just just like UAB, they couldn't match up with with our big guy. Uh, I don't think Yale's going to be able to match up with Lidi either. But somehow they were able to pull it out. Yeah, I I, I don't think they're as physical um, as Auburn. I mean, and you know, but they were like you said, they were able, they were still able to win it because they hit so many clutch three point shots and really they kind of just, they were on fire, you know, but Jen Lady is going to be a problem, you know, going into the UAB game, UAB knew who they had to stop, right? Mm. They, it was no surprise. You had to stop him and they couldn't do it. And he just absolutely went off. I mean, he is having the greatest season in Aztec basketball history. Um, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that he's the greatest Aztec ever just because he's only played two seasons, but certainly from um, a seat, just looking at one season. Yeah, this is the best an Aztec has ever played. And he absolutely carried us in this game offensively, you know, because outside of him and, you know, we'll, we'll get into Lamont Butler a little bit. 
um, and and Elijah Saunders, we didn't get any other shooting from the rest of the team. And yeah. so our big guys, they had to step up and they had to carry us, and that's exactly what they did. And the amazing thing was, I mean, he almost fouled out their entire front court. I mean, their guys like Lindeborg and Coleman and, you know, the, the other big guy that they had, I think they all had like three fouls, you know, going into halftime. And then Lindeborg got his fourth, like, shortly after the break. And, I mean, it, just a tremendous performance by him hitting all those shots, drawing fouls, hitting shots from the foul line late in the game when he's exhausted because we know that he's really kind of struggled when he's from the foul line when, when he's been on the floor for so long. And he just dug deep and and hit those clutch shots and I mean, just amazing, amazing performance. And I, I'm hopeful that he's going to repeat same and uh, against Yale. And we need him to. I mean, that's the bottom line. We we it's not that we just depend on him. Like we really need him to. Like what you're saying. Um, you know, we've spoken very candidly, Fiend, on on many a few occasions about the offense and just. You know, last I think our last preview were saying, you know, they just haven't played to the potential that we know that they can. I will say this, though, and I mean, there's no beating around that bush. I mean, it, it is what it is. The the if we had just another consistent presence out there to knock down shots to complement Lady, I mean, this team, woof, it's scary how how much this team could be. But what I loved about seeing that that pregame video that they put out, you know, you hear Coach Dutcher, you hear Coach Acker just really reinforcing that encouragement to the team, everybody on the team. Like, this is the tournament. It's win or go home. The energy, if you're not hitting shots, that's one thing. But your energy, everything has to be up here because that's what it's all about. Suddenly you get hot. What did we see? What did we see from uh, who was the cat from Oakland who just took nothing but threes, had never hit that many threes in his, in his whole career and was just nailing them? course mike michael parish is old school but that's the nature of the tournament you know you got to keep your energy up you got to believe as they say right you, you really do encourage your teammates pick them up because sooner or later you catch that groove any team's going to go on a run at certain points of the game can you sustain it can you really you know carry it through to the end this team may catch fire and i'm i'm here for it i'm ready for it yeah and, and you know where you really saw that show up in the game was yes, we weren't hitting shots, but the loose balls, right? Guys going to get loose balls, offensive rebounds. I mean, this is a team in UAB that had, you know, was a great offensive rebounding team, one of the best in the country, right? And I think we matched them on the offensive boards. And that that that's amazing because we've been getting killed on the boards you know, dur during the season. So having that energy and, and maybe, you know, just because it is the NCAA tournament, taking that energy to another level and really, really going after those missed shots and, you know, to, to secure second chance points for us. Um, that was a big, big part of why we won. You know, if yeah. we don't get some of those second chance opportunities, um, we're, we're probably not winning that game. Like you said, when we were down, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love this comment. From KS Silver Joker. Yale won't match up physically, but we can't fall into trying to match threes. We got to keep attacking the point and mid range. Even wide open, we had trouble hitting outside the arc. Thank you for your comment, Silver Joker. I, I agree 100%. And that's what I was so, so excited to see Lamont Butler, what he did. Because those, not second half, but really in those crunch moments, he stepped up, really took command. Dutcher said he allowed him to just create and, and kind of do what he does. You see, he obviously got these amazing steals, converted two of them for just monstrous dunks. Just, man, had had all of us at Nova. We were at Nova Brewing just getting loud. Uh, look at this thing, man. That is <laughs> sick. That is sick. <laughs> that Love that it. dunk right there reminded me of Matt Mitchell's dunk against New Mexico. When he cocked it back, you remember that back in 2020, yeah. and just had all of Viejas just you know the, just going crazy. Um, that that's what it <laughs> kind of felt like. I was jumping up in my seat, you know, when I was watching that. And yeah, I mean, um, not only did, was Jaden Lee huge in this game, but we we had an actual Batman and Robin right in this game, and mm. and um, and Lamont was that Robin, you know, and he yeah. stepped up big time, especially getting downhill off of, you know, pick and rolls and, and, you know, getting layups because he's so quick with that first step. 
also that awesome fadeaway shot that he made. Yeah. Um, oh, that was clutch too. And then, you know, really the defense, the defense, the defense on gains, their point guard, I think caused them five turnovers. Um, and then the other guys, Butta Johnson, I mean, um, and, and, and some of the other guards, I mean, he, he really stepped up on both ends of the floor and was huge for us in that game. So 69, 65, I, I didn't see UAB. I mean, some other guys got a, a, a little hot behind the three, but coming into Yale, let's see. It, it obviously wasn't the matchup any of us thought we were going to see. So I, I do want to talk a little bit about it before we dive completely into Yale because we were all anticipating what our friend Quinn here, uh, Auburn fan, Quinn Thomas, thank you for joining. Appreciate the super. Really appreciate the support. All you guys, our supers are open if you want to get you know more in-depth conversation about a topic or a question. All you got to do, well, just support the show a little bit. Appreciate you guys. He says, good luck tomorrow. Game should have been between our two teams, meaning Auburn and the Aztecs. But our team got all out of sorts when Chad got ejected let's talk about that a little bit fiend because i mean it's the story that's that's one of the one of the big stories around the the ncaa tournament already and you know it, it's it's a little tough because that's that's somebody that that obviously was here on the mesa i wanted to see that matchup happen i did uh it was it was a juicy matchup right um but to see him go down like that for them to make that call a flagrant two i mean not even five minutes in the game uh Oh man, I, I don't know how to feel about that, man. It's I think it's a little soft, to be honest with you. I think it was a little soft. I know by the letter of the rule or the letter of the law, like you're you're gonna do that. You're gonna call him and basically kick him out of the game. But I mean, when I when I look at the, the exchange here, right? If we're looking at on Twitter, <laughs> I love the clip. So if you look down here at the bottom, the kid pushes him already. The Yale kid pushes him out of the way first, but it's always the retaliation. You know, he cocked back the elbow and got him. So, eh, I don't, I don't know if that means anything, but uh, I thought it was premature, man. Yeah, I mean, we all know that from his time on the Mesa, Chad Baker Mazar is a fiery guy, right? He's very emotional, yeah. and um, from what you don't see there, uh, from what the coach from Auburn said. The guy actually hit him in the throat, and if you've ever been hit in the throat, man, that that hurts, you know. And that that you get mad, you know, if someone hits you in the throat like that. Yeah. And so he came back, and um, he on the you know next possession coming down the floor and just gave him that elbow. And I don't know, maybe the player did it to try to uh, you know bait him into doing that. Possibly, I, it might have been sort of like a pro move on his part, but. Yeah. You know, like you said, if you're following, you know, the rules, it's definitely within the rules. And, you know, maybe maybe by calling that you save worse injury, you know, from future retaliation. I don't know. But, yeah, they definitely could have called it a flagrant one and just had them shoot free throws and kept Chad on the floor. And, you know, really when, when he went out of the game, he is just like their Swiss Army knife, right? I think he's third in scoring. He's, the, he's their energy spark. Um, you know, defensively, he brings so much with that length that he has, and that was a big loss for them. And I think, uh, I think if he plays that full game, I think Auburn probably wins that game by about five, ten points. Um, I don't think uh, Yale wins that game at all. So you know, it's unfortunate. I, I'm, I'm, you know, maybe the the tournament committee had them had this matchup, you know, as a storyline, hoping that it would happen and it just it just didn't it just didn't happen and um again i you know when we start talking about yale i, I want to give them credit because that was a heck of an auburn team even without chad baker mazara i mean you got Janai broom who went off for like 20 what do you have 27 points i mean he's third team all-american just like Jaden ladee right and he got his points and they still lost right so that should tell you something you're going to need other contributors and, and you're going to need to lock down defensively if you want to get a win against these Yale Bulldogs. I'm, I'm glad, Quinn, that you brought it up, man. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get that matchup and get to see Chad Baker. But I, I think what it does, like we said initially there, Fiend, is it kind of gives us an insight to Yale, right? I mean, no doubt 
that was a move to, you know, he baited him. He baited him, baited him to do that. They know, they know, they do their research. Uh, that coach there, uh, uh, what's his name, Jones? Is that his name? Uh, the coach there at Yale, he's like fourth longest tenured coach in all NCAA. I mean, he's been there for a long time. Obviously, they're a smart team. They put the bait out there and Chad took it. Can't take the bait on that. So I hope that it serves as just the little, little those little games that I think this Yale team uh, they got in their in their in their pocket, you know. They got up their sleeve. I mean, they they knew the player they were going after, and they targeted him, and he fell for it. You just can't do it. You just can't do it. Yeah, you know, and our our fiery guys like uh, Micah Parrish, you know, they can't fall for that same bait. You know, they got to be disciplined and and play, you know, high IQ basketball, um, so that they don't they don't fall into that trap. You know, because we certainly wouldn't want to see him, you know, go out in the next game. Um, but yeah, I mean, Yale, they, they just, they played amazing, dude. <laughs> they were great. Yeah. I mean, the shooting, the three point shooting, Polidikas hitting, I think six and nine, three pointers. And, and, and let's, let's face it. Like their, their three point shots, they were tough shots. It wasn't like yeah. they were right on the line and they were open. I mean, they were taking contested, sometimes fade away, sometimes, you know, from five feet beyond the arc and hitting these threes. And um, that's what kind of scares me about this game going into it, you know, for the Aztecs, because um, for one, uh, Yale has longer guards. They're like six, four, six, five. We have, you know, two smaller guards in our starting lineup. Um, if you did notice at the end of the UAB game, we, we switched off Tramel uh, and brought in Reese waters for a little added height. Um, to guard Butter Johnson, and I think that disrupted his shot at the end. But those guys can hit threes, and they're hitting at a rate of like 38%, which would be like top 15 in the country over the last five games. So that means that they're hot, you know. And, I, you know, when we don't defend the three well, yeah, um, that's where we get into trouble because we're not making 40% of our threes you know, or 35% of our threes. And so we, we got to limit that. That's, that's going to be the big challenge in my opinion is how we're going to limit those guys, um, you know, and how we're going to, how well we're going to defend on the perimeter. Well, that's, it's interesting, right? You bring up that, that aspect, like how do we defend on the perimeter when, I mean, that's, that's one of the things we feel the most confident about, right? When you got defensive back-to-back -back defensive player of the year in, in Butler and in, in the backcourt, but it is, you know, it's a different, it's a different tournament. I hope that shines through. I, I'm pretty confident in that. I, I'm seeing a comment in here. Uh, we can wear out Yale and, and pull away in the second half if the Aztecs get physical. That is from uh, Friedman's journal. It says Aztecs have to eliminate any runs by Yale. It's one thing to eliminate runs by Yale, but we can't go on droughts. I mean, that was one of the big droughts that we had against UAB that allowed them to come back. I mean, it was like seven minutes out, something like that, just – we can't go on these droughts, but one of the things that uh, UAB did that I, I kind of hope we, we can instill is UAB when they picked up that that like I don't know if it was a three quarter or just a full court pressure and then fell into that one three one. I mean, just that full court presence, that pressure, killing you know some extra seconds off the shot clock. I, I hope we can bring some of that just to get Yale out of their offensive flow. Maybe that helps. You know, the pressure that Lamont and and Darian can bring. We'll see. I know we're more of a half court half court operation when it comes to defense, but that's something uh, I, I feel pretty good about. And, and obviously in these round of 32 games, it's the last game of the weekend. It's the second game. If you've made it to this point, you, you don't have a quick turnaround. If you make the sweet 16, if you advance, so it's time to just ball out, put it all out on the line, all your energy. It, you don't leave anything in the cupboard in this game. You put it all out. You empty out your bucket, as they say, uh, you know, there's no tomorrow, and if there is a tomorrow, well, it's later on in the next week in the Sweet 16. So, put it all out there. Oh, let's get to T Mac. Unless you got something to add there, Fien? Uh no, let's get to T Mac's comment. All right, thank you, T Mac, for the super. Appreciate all your contributions to the show, man. Hope everything's going well down in South America. It is not luck. The way we win, T Max says, it is experience and faith. We have been winning close games forever. We do what is required to win, like last year. Now, T Max picking the Aztecs to win the whole thing. I think that's what he said on the, <laughs> in his bracket. 
Aztecs all the way. I love it. I love the I faith. Mean, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, they did it last year, so these guys definitely have the belief that they can do it again. You know, and I, like Dutcher was saying, you know, the, the experience is very important um, and very valuable in, the, in these tournament games, you know. I mean, this is a whole nother level than what we saw in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. You know, I mean, that 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 is championship season, but then you take it to a different level. And what we saw from guys like Ladie and guys like but Butler in the last game was, you know, their championship form. And mm-hmm. so, you know, we need um, them and the other guys – you know, to really raise their game and, and continue that level of excellence um, and, and, and being having the faith to be able to, to close out those tough games, even when they're down or, you know, when it's tied with, uh, with a minute to go. I, I will have to agree with T-Mac. I mean, this is, uh, this is the way. This is the Aztecs way, right? And, and so when we lose these games in conference during the season, these tight ones, it's so rare. We get so uh, frustrated because it's just not like what we've been seeing. But, guys, if you look around the Mountain West and how they've done in this uh, NCAA, I mean, it's us in Utah State. It's us. And, and Fiend, did you get that Dairy Queen last night in, in celebration for the Aggies being the only other team to win a tournament game other than the Aztecs? Yeah, I said I was, but I, uh, you know, I didn't actually get out to Dairy Queen. I don't even know where there is a Dairy Queen near me, but um, I think, yeah, if they win, get to a Sweet Sixteen, I will definitely have to get out to a Dairy Queen and and celebrate for them. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, they're they're playing good basketball. I mean, the way that they handled TCU, who's a you know a very good team from the Big Twelve. Um, was was really impressive, and uh, their length, the big guys, you know, Asabor and Johnson, um, you know, and then and then Harris, uh, or, or excuse me, um, Darius, what's his name? Is it Darius Harris? I forget the name. The the guard, the guard, the point guard uh, for Utah State. I mean, he was fantastic as well. So, um, yeah, a tough matchup for them against Purdue and Edie, but we'll see how they do. But yeah, good for them. They're, we're the only two teams that you know have come through for the Mountain West. Uh, I was really kind of I was really disappointed in in New Mexico because I thought they would put up a better showing and against Clemson. But yeah, there you go. I mean, this is such. Uh, Jalen House here. What what the heck is he doing? What is that? Being his <laughs> water bottle on the floor. Oh, I mean, that's Lord. just such a childish move. What what was that? I mean, why why would you even do that? He was upset, but I mean that that's such a childish move. I can understand like if you're on a football field and you know it's grass or you know and then you're emptying you're fine. You, you're upset, but that you know it's the. Teammates could have slipped on the floor, and you know it's just that it's, it's stupid. Didn't make any sense. I don't get it. I don't know where the uh where where the Lobo where the Lobo watchers at, man. Where, where they at? We missed them. We missed them. But it's all good. It's all good. Darius Brown from Utah State point guard. Darius. Brown. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Okay, Adam Solomine. Thank you. Thank you. He says Yale doesn't play a zone. They really only play five in big games and the other two played because of foul trouble and that's kind of that's the nature of the tournament right somebody's got to step up these these games he's he says i'm watching my sixth yale game right now i love it love it love it love it i know gotta he does more research than we do yeah <laughs> I, I i i noticed in that auburn game that they didn't play any zone but that doesn't mean that they don't have it in their back pocket you know and that they won't play it but they won't have time to really practice it if they if it's not something that they really work on, you know? So I I was actually really surprised in that UAB game that we didn't see more zone from them because it was so effective and why they went back to -to man-to-man and Ladie was just handling them inside when they went um, man-to-man was a big surprise to me because of how, you know, how we shoot the ball from the outside. But glad they did, you know, we'll see what what, uh, Yale does. But I think if they stick to man to man, I like our, I like our chances against them. I like Mikey B adding some some really uh, thought provoking points here. It says Yale's three point shooting scares me. They can knock it down, but Auburn didn't defend the three defense. They didn't shift on swing passes, and Yale killed them on curl threes off a screener from the wing. Uh, Auburn snagged off the, as well, though. 
Yeah, that's been a point. That's been a point of yours, man. The three point defense. I saw you uh, tweet tweet out there. I think it was to Darnay, right? And they were talking about our. He was comparing our three point percentage, what we've made compared to last year's team. But if you guys have been listening to the show, it's not so much about what we've been hitting. Of course, we want to hit more percentage of threes, but how are we defending against the three? That that aligns with what Mikey Mikey B is saying, man. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if we really, you know, if we switch more off of those screens um, to kind of uh, limit their, uh, you know, if we're switching, then they're not going to be as open. Um, but you got to communicate, and you know, they're really good at doing what I notice things like um, Spain pick and rolls, where they'll, you know, it's kind of like almost like a Princeton uh, offense philosophy. Obviously, they're in the Ivy League, but. You know, they're like a Spain pick and roll, and then the guy will like roll to the basket, and it just it's very difficult to pick it up because there's three guys involved in the in the the pick, like in the screen, and um, they they got easy bucket, you know, from that, and just the they're they're a very well disciplined team. They they run great sets, and like I said, they can knock them down. And um, what what really tells me how talented this Yale team is is a guy like Yasin Garam. Okay, you seen Grom played at Foothills Christian. He's the starting point guard for Brian Ganster's team, Elite Ballers in the Swish League. He's a baller. All right. Um, that guy can abs that cat can absolutely ball. And I've been watching him probably for three years now as their point guard. And he comes off the bench for Yale. He's not even their starting point guard. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I mean, he, he's a great player. So that tells me that they have some great talent on that team. If he can't crack the starting lineup for Yale. Now he made some good contributions yesterday and he hit a big free throw that, you know, put them up, I think three um, late in the game, but number 24, right? Number 24. Yeah. You've seen Grom. He's, yeah, just, right. he's a great player. I mean, I, I love watching him in Swiss league. Um, So, you know, they're, they're talented. They're talented. Let's not underestimate them. I, I, I can't, I can't, you know, emphasize this enough that like just because we beat blew out Furman last year because they were the lower seed, right? Uh, does right. not mean that we are just automatically going to the Sweet 16 to play the num- play the number one seed in UConn. All right, we have to get by this Yale team, and and it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle tomorrow. A very intriguing thing, you know. I I kind of butchered his name. Didn't really know it's it's common name. James Jones is the basketball coach there at Yale. This is his 24th, 25th season there. That is that is incredible. He's a New York guy. He's excellent coach. Like you said, they're very smart, disciplined. Um, supposedly, they had the best team in the Ivy League last year, but Harvard went on to win the tournament. So they got the bid, whereas they got left out. And Harvard actually, what, did they went to the Sweet 16 last year. So, um that tells you Ivy League, they they play some ball. Don't you can't uh, I know we like to have fun, like call them nerds, eggheads. I've seen all the chatter on Twitter. I've seen it all. Hey, we played UCSD and they took us down to the very last possession. So um, you know, basketball is not all just uh physicality, right? A lot of metrics go into it. Like these are some smart dudes, man. They're they're trying to figure out the best way to have an advantage when you don't have the physical advantage. So it's yeah. gonna be game and you got to respect that coach i mean he's built a culture there very very uh similar amount of tenure there that coach dutcher has you know yeah plus they're battle tested they're a battle tested team if you look at their non-conference schedule they lost on the road at gonzaga so they played at gonzaga and they lost in fog allen Fieldhouse uh at kansas so they played some really really tough games on the yeah. road in their non-conference schedule and that only you know prepares you for moments like this right yeah. um if you've been able to go in there and you get the nerves out and you're you know you're battle tested then um you're you're much more prepared than a team that hasn't played those games like we saw with a lot of mountain west conference teams uh with their auto conference scheduling um you know struggle in this tournament so um, I, I don't yeah. think Furman Furman didn't play that that type of quality out of conference last year, right? I, I don't think Furman did. I don't remember. I don't. I, yeah, yeah. I, hand, I don't remember. I wouldn't think so though. That's a great point, though, man. 
What's up, sons? Rick Toronto, what's going on? Sarah Fembone. Okay. Uh, I know what that stands for. Let's go. Let's go, San Diego State. Thank you to Jim Barry out there in Spokane for also tuning in. You guys really appreciate all the support. I'm um, not sure when we're going to go live again and recap this Yale game. It might be on Monday, but we got some big news coming on Monday, guys. So you definitely want to tune in on Monday. A, a really, really big announcement for us here at Sons of Montezuma. Very proud. And uh, I can't spill the beans. I, I'm tempted. I really want to, but I can't. Monday, make sure you guys tune back in. It should be a win. It should be a win. I'm not being overconfident. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a war. This is gonna be a war. This team took down the SEC tournament champion, Auburn. That is no joke. Everybody had Auburn at least sweet 16, at least. And some people said final four. I mean, they were that that promising of a team. So Whew, where uh I'm not sure where we're gonna be watching it, Fiend. I'm not sure where I'm going yet. A lot of people where where are you guys watching? Let us know in, in the comments where are you guys gonna be at. We were at Novo, it's the Ehos were up at Ale Smith. Some people are saying the Hills, McGregor's, all over San Diego County is all covered. So we're trying to figure out where, where we're gonna be at for this game, man. Where we're we gonna be. Okay. The travel turnaround will be brutal. What, what, what's that going on? Going to going to Boston if we were to win this game? Is that is that what that is, Fembone? If the Aztecs were to win, we look at the bracket, most likely they are going to play UConn, right? And that's going to be in Boston. We mentioned that before. UConn's got Northwestern, though, and Northwestern took down AFU. I couldn't believe. I mean, it's an even matchup, but FAU, boy, what a, what a hangover of a season, man. They returned everybody. I thought they were definitely going to be much better this year, dude. Yeah, I mean, they uh, really underperformed all year, and they were, you know, not consistent. They weren't a consistent team. They didn't win the conference tournament, um, weren't playing their best basketball down the stretch, Northwestern. But yeah, I think we mentioned in our the other podcast that we had where we were doing the bracket that they beat Purdue at home. I mean, that's an impressive win. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it would be great if they could knock off y UConn just because – if we were to get back past Yale again, I'm not penciling us in for that game. Um, but if we were able to get past Yale, then you know UConn is playing in their backyard in the TD Garden, which is a bus ride for them and all their fans mm -hmm. in New England. So that that's that's a de facto road game for us. So we'll see. I just one game at a time, right? I, I'm taking our you know our colleague Mike Tortolat's philosophy. Just thinking about yeah, that's it. I'm just thinking about yeah, one game at a time. Not getting that's ahead of it. myself. That's it. That's it. Well, I'm trying to keep my eye on these games going on right now, man. It's a little, little tough to tell, but I hope you guys are watching. It, I mean, March Madness, this is the best, guys. This is the best. Happy to see everybody's going to be out and about watching the games uh, everywhere. The, the SEC has been underperforming. Oh, Ricky. I see you. I see you. SEC has been underperforming in the tournament. Okay, I'll give you that. So has the Mountain West. So has the Mountain West. But, you know, that's every year. That's every year. Fiend, how are you feeling, guys? How are you guys feeling in the chat? I, I think uh, I think I'm ready for this game, man. I think we're ready. Um, I, I, like, I like us coming out with the victory. Of course, we got to be positive. Got to think. Got to believe. And uh, I'm looking forward to a, a UConn rematch, man. I want it. I think the guys want it. Um, it's it's a brutal bracket, but in a way, okay. If you're gonna get over it, let's get over it. Let, let's do it. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it done. Yeah, I mean, Feeling if you want to win an, a national championship, you're gonna have to go through the best. So might as well do it whenever you can. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, tomorrow, hopefully, uh. At the end of the day, we'll release who is winning our ESPN Bracket Challenge. And uh, we'll be one more weekend closer to declaring a national champion. Keeping our it's definitely not me. Up. I know that for sure. <laughs> My bracket is done. I had McNeese State, dude. I had McNeese State. Come on. And then you I see Gonzaga. The, I had the Lobos in the Final Four, so I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you really put them in the Final Four? Dude? I think I did, yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on. Shout out to K5 James. He's he's uh he's he's winning winning pretty good out there betting against Mountain West teams out there in Vegas. 
Good for him. That's great. Next year, I got to do that. I always say that every year I'm going to do March Madness the first the first weekend in Las Vegas. I might have to do that next year. I might have to do that. Just stay I'd there like for the month. I'd like to just take the entire month of March off. I think it should be like a national <laughs> holiday. Just love to have that much paid time off and sick time to be able to take that off. That'd be awesome. I'm not against that. Not against that. All right. Well, guys, we appreciate you joining. Make sure you are checking out sonsofmontezuma.com, our online shop, our NIL merch, all of our different tees, hats, hoodies, everything we got going, posters, and even socks. Oh, I thought I had some socks around here, man. You know, got to have my uh, my parish socks, man. Got the dog in them. Got the dog in them. I love that. Go check those out right now in the online shop, the NIL shop. We appreciate you, all your support, all your supers, guys, all the all the comments and the feedback. Let us know where you're going to be watching tomorrow, and hopefully, uh, if you guys see a if you guys see a van cruising around, if you guys see a, a black van with a red top, and if you see it cruising around, honk at me. <laughs> all right, fiend, ready? Let's do this. Let's get this win tomorrow, man. I am excited. I, I wish we were playing tonight, man. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Another, I mean, we're still dancing. Still dancing in the tournament. Let's go. Let's get another one. Let's go, Aztec Nation. All right, everybody. Thank you. On behalf of Mike Tortolot, who's not here, hopefully back with us on Monday, SD Sports Fiend. I'm Mateo San Diego signing off. Sons of Montezuma.com. Go Aztecs. Beat Yale. Let's go. Go Aztecs. See you guys.